Namaste Galactic Family. Welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. Thank you for your continued love and support and please hit that notifications bell to continue to receive my messages. Today I was guided to do what I'm calling the week of Orion for the month of December. As planetarily we are in oppositional aspects to several stars in Orion. So today I will be doing an Orion Ascension reading for the star origin Bellatrix which is Gamma Orion. This is the star of searching. This is the power to give fulfillment. Um, this star can be quickly coming or swiftly destroying. They're kind of, um, but typically they are a more gentle nature. They are a more peaceful nature as opposed to their neighbor Betelgeuse. Okay, so Betelgeuse and Bellatrix uh, Gamma Orion are the only two stars within the Orion constellation that are of a lunar nakshatra. Um, but Gamma Orion Bellatrix is a star that I typically will search for um, during my starseed origin readings. Um, and this can range anywhere from 23 degrees 20 Taurus to 6 degrees 40 Gemini. Their spirit animal is said to be the deer. Okay, so it kind of gives you an idea of their overall gentleness, like how gentle Bellatrix really truly is. Out of all of the stars in Orion, it is the softest star origin. They do have the most approachable, gentle nature opposed to the other star systems. They don't take on so much as the strong hunter, you know, mythology. They're more of the feminine nature. They're more of the tender, soft, peaceful, um, receptive nature. You could say that they have the feminine quality being on the left side of the body as they are the left shoulder of Orion. Um, but here in Gamma Orion in Bellatrix, they do work through more difficult aspects of the psyche. Um, they don't like it when their personal weaknesses feel exposed. They don't like to feel vulnerable they really actually it frustrates them to feel vulnerable um, they will experience less success than Betelgeuse origins Betelgeuse is like this very strong just energy where it's just like I'm here and I'm here to take what's mine and um, I'm here to you know be this god and, and that fights through all of the hard and dreadful and the sharpness and I'm here to invigorate and I'm here you know to be invincible um, Gamma Orion is, they don't carry that nature. They're not as um, exposed in their strengths, okay? They, they hold their strength as something that they only share it if they need to. Um, they're kind of like a grin your teeth and bear it type of origin. Um, they don't feel safe, like I said, they don't feel safe being vulnerable. They immediately sense resistance in others. They immediately sense when the energy isn't safe to be vulnerable and they truly do feel like this with most of their interactions with most people. Like they don't feel safe to be vulnerable with most people. They can have a hard time seeing or feeling kindness in others because they are in such a place of needing to protect their energy field they have been known to suffer more tragic outcomes than other starseed origins um, and i think that in lies why they are so hesitant with their energy with being vulnerable to other people is because they've become the target of a lot of foul play um, this star also indicates that you will need to look very seriously at personal weaknesses and true success be it spiritual or be it materially will only come through personal growth in this star system. Things are not handed to you within this alignment and typically depending on the planetary body of other influences, um, it will show you what period in life this self-awareness and personal, personal growth will develop the most. Okay, so typically it will be through the middle ages um, of your lifespan having this in your origin. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind is Bellatrix and Gamma Orion does sit at the left shoulder of Orion. Okay, so in between Bellatrix is Mintaka, which is the head council. 
And then below is Rigel, which is where a lot of this harsher, more rigid energy resides. This is where a lot of the intruder lineages, this is kind of like the intruder lineage capital is Rigel. And so it's kind of like the light and the dark aspects is Mintaka is kind of in between as like the peacekeeper. And then you have Bellatrix as the light at the top and then Rigel as the darkness at the bottom. And so you're kind of always battling those darker forces right underneath you, so to speak. And so that can really, it can be an internal thing. It can be like a Christ versus Antichrist DNA type of um, experience within yourself. Um, or it can just be a blockage where you can't really see into one or the other. So it keeps you very polarized in one aspect. Um, but typically, Gamma Orions are, you know, they, they feel they need to be protected. They feel that a lot of times that they just, they, see, they seek protection a lot. Um, especially if you think about their spirit animal as the deer, like it has such a soft nature that it just feels exposed. They feel like they're always maybe running from something that um, they feel vulnerable. Um, and so for this star, it's, it's about building confidence. It's about um, really connecting also to your original angelic nature. So there's a lot of original Orions that reside in Bellatrix. This would be the more angelic aspect of the Orion nation. So Bellatrix would be the home for this. A lot of Bellatrix or Gamma Orion origins will see themselves as that seraphim, um, Elohim. Um, they uphold a lot of avian, a lot of mantis. They uphold the Emerald Covenant and they do uphold the peace treaties. So Gamma Orion is definitely a benevolent star system. There are some mixed sun agendas in Bellatrix, but overall um, Gamma Orions do represent the light aspects as they do transmit to Mintaka, which is the headquarters of Orion. Um, and they do present, they do possess a lot of mechanics and technologies of the mind. So Bellatrix are very mental um, as far as their thoughts and creations. They do stay within the mental body a lot. Um, and they do bring forth a lot of resources for the common person. Um, they fight for the common wealth. They, com they fight for the common health. They fight for the middle class. They fight for the lower class. Um, they're the type that are definitely going to like help, want to help the homeless and like, um, because they have such a gentle, compassionate nature to them. Um, they're very soft hearted that they um, they're fighters of the darkness, but they're also those that are, um, they, they pick and choose their battles. Like they're not going to willingly go put themselves um, in the line of battle, similarly to a Betelgeuse origin would do. Like a Betelgeuse would just go into battle because they are like this very strong masculine hunter. But you know, Bellatrix is more of like the feminine energy. So it's going to be more it's going to pick and choose what they do and don't want to participate in because they know that they are soft. They know that they are vulnerable in a lot of these ways. Now, it doesn't mean that they are weak by any means. They're not weak. They just, um, they uphold a higher standard for life, honestly. And so they, they feel that these types of behaviors are below them. Okay. First cards for Bellatrix Origin. So we have the Two of Cups and we have the Ace of Swords. Okay, so with the Two of Cups, you know, a lot's going on in the heart space right now. A lot's going on in the emotional body. You're definitely juggling your emotions into a couple different places right now, a couple different aspects of focus. These things are heavily on your mind. Um, it ties into a lot of your passions um, and your relationships right now. There's a lot going on with the relationship aspect. Um, you are seeking more maturity in your relationship. You're seeking 
an easier love dynamic. It seems with the Ace of Swords that there's been some new realities that have presented. Some things may have been basically like eliminated or cut off or just unexpectedly relationships have come to an end. There's definitely this sense about you and your mental space where you may have been the one that chose that, but your heart's still going back and forth and battling those decisions that you've made. Like you're not sure if it was the right choice or not. Your human keeps pulling you back into this emotional tangle and tanglement in your heart. But um, your mind, your higher masculine mind is telling you that um, you do need to keep moving forward and that you are making these decisions based upon your higher knowing and that you do need to stay committed to the direction that you are going in right now. With the Ace of Swords, you're done making excuses. You're done with the excuses of everybody else involved and you really are connecting to that higher intelligence where you don't want to have to go into a space of being violent or getting your energy up into a place where you're having to raise your voice. You really don't like raising your voice. As a Bellatrix origin, you like to have peaceful arguments. Like you're not going to lower yourself um, into a space of a lower vibration to take on anything that you know is just going to be toxic. So you're kind of past all of that. I see you moving forward in a healthy direction. Okay, next cards, Bellatrix Starseed. Okay, so you are having some sorrow. You are feeling some grief with this loss and these decisions to move in the direction that you're moving. Um, you do know overall this is in your best interest, um, but you are having to let go um, and there is some suffering that's attached to that. Um, you are holding on to a couple things in particular within your emotional body. I'm sensing it's the relationship and it's also a little bit of the foundation, um, but you do have blessings that you just can't see yet. They are kind of sitting in another aspect of your energy field and they're just kind of moving their way into your view Point, but you're not quite ready to accept them just yet. So you're, you're still surrendering a lot. Um, there's a lot of Scorpio energy. I do also see you connecting to Regulus here as well. I see a lot of Antares energy. So you're still connecting very much to the previous star system that we're moving out of right now. Um, whatever came through Antares is what basically shook up your reality. Um, so you, you really need to detach from the Antares nature. Um, the entanglement is still in with the Antares. So I'm picking up that maybe even the other person had strong Antares markers in their chart. Um, but you are needing to release your connection to Antares. You don't need to hide out. Like you aren't needing to seclude yourself or go into any type of hermit like behavior um, because whatever it is you're clearing particularly um, isn't something that's going to take a lot of time to get over. Um, it wasn't that rooted in your cellular structure. It wasn't that hooked or implanted inside in any way. So it's really not going to take you as much time as you think to get through these energies, but change is um, moving through you right now. Okay. I'm also picking up on Aldebaran. Wow, really strong Aldebaran connections here. So Archangel Michael's coming in. You're also connecting to Horus. Um, you're connecting to a lot of uh, higher angelic energies from that star system that's coming through. Um, your oversoul is coming through and is also confirming that you are moving forward in a more higher consciousness aspect, more connected and more rooted in your spiritual knowing. Okay, so... Once this passes, there's going to be more connection to the oversoul, more connection to the higher self. I can see that the entire chakra system is definitely illuminating right now. You're recentering, you're refocusing on what's important, you're drawing that energy into the chakra system and into the cathara aspects of your body um, you are feeling illuminated you might even be doing a lot more astral traveling right now i see levitation i see um your astral body 
um, coming out of your physical body and is actually observing you at the moment, especially during your lucid dreams in your sleep realm. There's a lot of this um, activity that is going on within the psyche and um, the astral auric levels of your body. And so you feel very illuminated right now um, with that spiritual energy. Your, your reality recently has been, you know, physically and emotionally demanding. And so your light body has activated to um, assist with this stress and this density that has been um, basically going through your body and through your mind and through your heart. And so there is going to be an alleviation of this energy. Okay, so we have the moon, we have the yin, we have the feminine energy. This totally makes sense because Bellatrix, starseed origin, you are that feminine receiving side of the Orion star system. And so there is a lot more that goes on in a psychic um, nature in this star system, in this star origin. You definitely connect um, on a more psychic level more so than Betelgeuse origins do. Um, and so a lot is playing out within this realm for you. Um, there's just this receiving energy that you're drawing in right now. Um, and then you also have the lover's card. So yes, kind of what I picked up on here with the first card is that the person that this heartache is over it's definitely somebody that you hold as a very strong soul contract, whether that's a twin flame or whether that is somebody who you've perceived as even a soulmate, but there's definitely been a soul contract with this person um, for you to then experience yourself, experience what you need to shift in your reality. Um, they're marrying you in a way that is very frustrating at this point right now because you're just trying to step back into your empowerment and not be vulnerable because you really don't like being vulnerable. You don't like having to show vulnerability because you literally clench through your teeth when you feel like you see somebody judging you based off of your inability to express who and what you really are and what you really want. And it really frustrates you. I can feel that frustration coming through with this other person that there has been this judgment and, um, so the quarrel is definitely between a soul contract, um, but you definitely need to stay strong in that sword, ace of swords energy, because um, whatever has played out up until this point has been showing you what really truly does need to happen. And you really do know and understand this and feel this from the depth of your being um, coming in through the moon. Like this is something that is really up underneath you, supporting you, upholding you. So whatever decisions have been made, whether that's to separate from this person, um, you know, different living situation, you know, releasing the old and embracing the new is something that you're really gonna have to start to accept and allow within your reality. There could be changes, okay? You do feel like you're holding on to some hope. I see hope up here. I see you really seeking and holding on to some type of idea of a future entanglement. But for right now, you might just need to shut that shit down and let the universe unfold for just some time. You're needing some time to let things unfold just a little bit longer so that way you can see what you need to really see and allow that other person to go through some soul growth as well because there is some soul growth, particularly on their end, that they're needing to go live their life individually and really need to figure out who they are and what they want and you as well. And that is okay. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Last card for Bellatrix Starseed. So the Six of Swords is all about moving on and finding, you know, safer grounds. It's about moving away from the more turbulent times and experiences and reality fields. And it's about you know, getting closer to your spirit guides, allowing your spirit guides to assist you, really focusing on your energy, on yourself, who and what you want, 
um, taking your time to heal, taking your time to, you know, do you for a while and know that you have, you know, six swords on your back that if anything comes at you at this point, you're very well prepared to take that on. Even though you are of a softer nature and you don't like feeling vulnerable, you don't like feeling judged, you're very freaking frustrated with that, okay? But you're just needing to take a couple of those swords out and just cut off those attachments and entanglements and allow yourself to keep moving on um, in the direction you're going because you are doing just fine. You're regaining your strength. You have the Knight of Swords here, okay? So you do have some security in that. You do have... You do feel like there has been some justice that has been served and you do feel like you can breathe again just a little bit and refocus on ascension, refocus on spirit, refocus on aligning to your highest vibration and re just focus on yourself. For you, I think this is all about coming back into your center point grounding, restabilizing, not focusing so much on the other person or, or the, anybody else involved at this point, reprioritizing yourself as a priority at this point, um, reclaiming your strength and your, your inner knowing, your sovereignty, your inner guidance, reconnecting with your spiritual guides. Um, uh, your light body is very, very activated right now. So there is a lot of cellular repair that is happening from all of these turbulent times that we're coming through. And um, just give yourself that time to keep going through that repairing process. I do see the Lyrans are also working with you. Um, so there's connections to Lyrans and also to Regulus that are also coming through to assist you through this. Okay, so Bellatrix, Starseed, Namaste. I wish you a beautiful December. You are going to have some shifts that are coming through around the new moon, November 26th. So just try to hold your highest vibration through those times as you will be manifesting outcomes for the full moon on December 11th. Also, we have the particle conversion, 10-day particle conversion that's coming through December 5th through the 14th. So just um, prepare yourself energetically because we might be seeing a lot of changes that are coming through that particle conversion um, as the stellar activations and planetary alignments seem to amp up during that time. So, you know, this for you is a healing time, a healing process, um, regaining your strength um, to a point that you don't have to feel vulnerable, that you got yourself right now. You don't have to expose your dirty laundry to anybody if you don't want to. Be careful who you do and don't tell your personal information to because not everybody's your friend. And Bellatrix, you understand this the most because of your position above Ventaka, above Rigel. You do hold the most ascended knowing in accordance to those other star positions. And so that is why you are hesitant. That is why you are the softer side of Orion. Okay, but you are not weak because of that. You just don't like showing others your weakness. And so that's okay. Um, you don't have to, just just be careful who you talk to. Keep things more to yourself. Don't share things with other people, especially if you feel resistance from them. They don't need to know, okay? So, namaste, Bellatrix. I love you guys so much. I will see you on the next Orion reading.